Okay, so let's start. Um, let's try to understand how we can compress this particular passage, or let's find out how do you read this passage in an actual examination scenario. So I'm going to teach you some three or four very nice, cool principles. You use those principles, you'll be able to compress such a difficult passage to 20% of its original size. So let me show you how to do that. So let's start. Okay. The nub of the restorationist critic or preservationism is the claim that it rests on an unhealthy dualism which conceives nature and humankind as radically distinct and opposed to each other. Okay. So let me teach you some interesting concepts, guys. Okay. Two simple concepts. <coughs> okay. So let's take, let's look at this example. Ram told Ravan that Sita is very beautiful. Okay, so Ram told Ravan that Sita is very beautiful. Now you guys tell me what is important in this line. Okay, Ram told Ravan that Sita is very beautiful. Okay, now Ram can tell Ravan, I can also tell Mr. Ravan. Okay, or Hanuman can tell Ravan also that Sita is very beautiful. This really doesn't matter to us. This really doesn't matter to us. What is really very important is Sita is very beautiful. So whatever comes after this word that is always going to be very important. Okay, that's one of your most important principles. Okay, which type of sentences will hold true? We'll discuss that later in our actual session. But at least at this point of time, you should understand whatever comes after the word that is always going to be very, very important. That is Sita is very beautiful in this sentence. So this word that is going to be very important for us. Okay, let's look at one more sentence, guys. Okay, uh, Ravan, okay, who was a great king, Okay, Ravan, who was a great king, died of swine flu. Okay, Ravan, who was a great king, died of swine flu. Again, you guys tell me what is important in this line. Ravan, who was a great king, died of swine flu. Now, whether he was a great king, useless king, useful king, handsome king, does it really matter to us? What is the crux? What is the most important idea in that line? Ravan died of swine flu. So what is really very important is Ravan died of swine flu. This is the most important aspect of this particular line or the most important idea of this line is Ravan died of swine flu. Who was a great king is giving you some additional information guys. It's clearly giving you some additional info. Okay. Now uh, these are what we call as relative clauses. Okay, these are what we call as relative clauses. Okay, now I will give you the definition of what are relative clauses in my reading principles class. Okay, how to read passage as a separate session by itself. I will discuss all these concepts in my reading principles class. But at this point of time, let's just understand, uh, I'll, I'll just give you some clues as to how to identify a relative clause. Okay, in a sentence, right? How do I know this is a relative clause or not? Very simple, guys. Uh, relative clauses start off with words like who, which, what, okay, where, okay, when. So relative clauses typically start off with words like who, which, what, where, and when. Okay, these are what we call as relative clauses. Right, simple guys, ignore relative clauses. Okay, ignore relative clauses. Don't worry about relative clauses. Similarly, the first rule was whatever comes before the word that is not important. Whatever comes after the word that is going to be very important. And the second sentence over here is, uh, in the second sentence, the second rule, Okay, what is fundamentally the second rule? Okay, don't worry about relative clauses. Ignore relative clauses. Like, who, ir relative clauses typically start off with words like who, which, what, where, and when. Just ignore them. Okay, so what is important for us is Ravan died of swine flu. Okay, now why don't you guys use these two rules and tell me what is important in the first line. Just look at it, right? The nub of the restorationist critic of preservationism is the claim that... Now, what is coming after the word that it rests on an unhealthy dualism? Okay, so preservationism is basically resting on an unhealthy dualism. So let's underline this part of the sentence. Okay, I'll probably highlight it. Okay, this part of the sentence is going to be very important. It rests on an unhealthy dualism. Fine. Now, which conceives nature and humankind as radically distinct. Now, why am I worried about what comes after the word which? Ignore it. Okay, let's just scratch this off. This is not very important for us. This is not really very important. Okay, so what is the point he's trying to say in the first line? He says that preservationism is based on an unhealthy dualism. That's all. The first line which had so many words, ultimately we are just compressed it to five words. Let's have fun. Let's look at the next line. Okay, dissatisfaction with dualism has for some time figured prominently in the not so happy writings of environmentalists with mainstream industrial society as in the writings of X and Y. Now the point is they themselves are dissatisfied with this line. 
they are not happy with his writings or they are specifically not happy with this line why should i worry about this line these are typically sentences with negative connotation don't worry about sentences with negative connotation they will say this is not what i wanted to say this is not what i wanted to do why are we worried about all these things just ignore this line don't even bother to read this line moment they say dissatisfaction with the not so happy writings okay fine you yourself are not happy why should i waste my time make myself very sad reading those lines ignore typically we'll discuss this rule ignore sentences with negative connotation okay ignore sentences with negative connotation this is one of the very important principles which i'll discuss in my reading principles class read the next line what's the first word however very important word these are what we call as structure words guys very very important words okay however the writings of the restorationists themselves who oh, we got a hyphen here what do you think typically comes between hyphens it's typically ex explanation or examples right don't worry about all those things the writings of the restorationists themselves offer little evidence to support this criticism or indictment okay, this is a very important part it has a word called however he says however the writings of the restorationists themselves offer little evidence to support this criticism okay this is a very important part okay we ignored whatever is coming within the two hyphens because they are typically examples they are explanation of whatever is there before the hyphen i have understood the first part the writings of restorationists themselves offer little evidence to support this criticism okay very important line next line okay now let me teach you one more important principle so we have seen three of them right so we saw this um, story with respect to that we saw this story with respect to relative clauses okay let me teach you one more important principle again the way i'm going to teach you english is very interesting guys i'm going to give you very simple examples with those examples in mind we will derive the important principles okay let me give you a simple example okay let's look at the statement as he was walking down the road okay with reebok shoes and rayban sunglasses okay he saw miss aishwarya rai okay guys so very simple sentence now you guys tell me what is the most important part of this particular sentence what is the most important part of the sentence see when i introduce the sentence in the class most of the people believe that miss aishwarya rai even now is the most important part of the sentence she has got married she has got kid and all but still she is the most important part of the sentence but anyway just tell me which part of the sentence is important guys there are two distinct parts of the sentence let's look at the first part as he was walking down the road with reebok shoes and rayban sunglasses this is one part of the sentence let's call it the first part of the sentence and the second part is he saw miss aishwarya rai this is going to be a second part of the sentence now let's look at these two parts individually first one as he was walking down the road with reebok shoes and rayban sunglasses let's take this part of the sentence separately let's ask a question can this part of the sentence stand separately can it stand alone without the help of the second part just think about it right as he was walking down the road can it stand alone or it, it uh, do you think it is incomplete and therefore it requires the help of the other part of the sentence definitely right it requires the other other part of the sentence it requires the help of the other part of the sentence because the first part is incomplete right so this is what we call as a dependent clause this is what we call as a dependent clause right now look at the second half he saw miss aishwarya rai can this stand alone or does it require the support or help of any other part of the sentence not all right he saw miss aishwarya rai can stand alone okay if i give you a statement he saw miss aishwarya rai it is complete okay it doesn't require the help of any other statement that means this is going to be an independent clause the rule is very simple guys don't worry about dependent clauses ignore dependent clauses see it cannot stand on its own if it cannot stand on its own why am i worried about that part of the sentence what is really important is your independent clause sorry what is really important in this particular sentence is the independent clause he saw miss aishwarya rai this is the most important part of the sentence don't worry about the dependent clause guys okay now let's try to apply that in the sentence let's look at the sentence okay uh in their view preservationists are imbued with the same basic mindset as the industrial mainstream we have a comma here that means the second half is going to come now the only difference being that the later exalts human over nature while the former elevates nature over humans again two parts of the sentence or three parts in their view is one part preservationists are imbued with the same basic mindset as the industrial mainstream 
Okay, and what is second half? The only difference being that the later exalts human over nature, while the former elevates nature over humans. Right. So these are three parts. Let's look at the first one. In their view, can it stand alone? No. Ignore. Preservationists are imbued with the same basic mindset as the industrial mainstream. Yes, this can stand alone. So this most probably is your independent class. Okay, preservationists are imbued with the same basic mindset as industrial mainstream. Now let's look at the second one, or let's look at the third part of the sentence. The only difference being that the later exalts human over nature, while the former exalts nature over humans. Okay, so this part of the sentence is clearly a dependent clause. It cannot stand alone. Okay, so ignore this part of the sentence. Right. Now let's apply this rule in the next sentence. Very simple. Look at the next sentence. While it is perhaps puzzling that Jordan and Turner do not see that there is no logic that requires dualism as a philosophical underpinning for preservation. Clearly, you know, it starts off with the word while. It cannot be an independent clause. It has to be a dependent clause. Ignore this entire part. More puzzling is the sharpness and relentlessness of their attack on preservationists. This is definitely your independent clause. More puzzling, a puzzling is the sharpness and the relentlessness of their attack on preservation. Okay, so they're like, uh, they're a little bit confused why there, are show, why there is such a sharp attack on preservationists. Now look at the next part. Accentuated by the fact that they offer little, if any, criticism of those who have plundered the natural world. Again, not very important. Okay, now look at the first paragraph, guys. The first paragraph was one of the most complicated paragraphs you would have ever read in your life. Because it's like talking about preservationists, restorationists, some uh, one dominating the other, etc. Then you've got Carolyn Merchant, Theodore Rosak, etc. and all. Very complicated paragraph. But just applying three to four important principles. By the way, in my reading principle class, I'm going to teach you ten important reading principles. Here we just use three or four. Okay, so first one we saw was about this... Um, the first one we saw, okay, the first rule which we saw was clearly about this concept using that. Second one was about relative clause. Third one was dependent and independent clause. Then we saw some structure word, okay, that however, etc. No. Using these three or four important principles, we, are, we, were, we were successful in compressing the first paragraph, okay, to 20 or 30 percent of its original size. Look at it, no? Just look at the amount of highlighting we have done in the first paragraph. Point number one, preservationism rests on an unhealthy dualism. What is the second point? Okay, the writings of restorationists don't support this criticism. Third point, preservationists are imbued with the same basic mindset as industrial mainstream. And what happened? There is, we are very confused as to why there is such a harsh attack or a stringent attack on preservationists. That's all. 80, let's put it like this, no? Conservationist, very, very, uh, let's say, very optimistic reduction which I've done is I've knocked off 60% of the passage, guys. We just knocked off 60% of the first paragraph just by using four principles. Just think about, moment I teach you 10 important principles, you'll be able to knock off 80% of the passage. And this is something so easy to apply also. Dependent clause, independent clause. Relative clause starts off with the word who, which, what, where. The word that is easy to identify. And words like however, thus and all is so simple to identify. Okay. So fine guys, okay, we will look at second paragraph and second, third paragraph a little later guys, okay, but I just wanted to give you a glimpse of my reading principles class. In fact, what we will do is, uh, well, the, fir the first few sessions which we're going to discuss, in the first few sessions, I think the first session or the second session is going to be on reading principles. That is what I'm going to discuss up front. In reading principles, what I will do, you do is, I will teach you 10 important principles. Okay, I'm going to teach you 10 important principles. Okay, these 10 important principles is going to teach you, okay, all these 10 important principles will definitely help you to compress the passage. Okay, it will pick up that 20% which will help you to answer 80% of the questions. Okay, so fine guys. So I have finished off the first part of the entire story. Okay, or uh, I told you there are three issues, right?